Good glorious morning. Thank you for all who are tuning in right now. This is Resurrected Love. Welcome to Resurrected Love Podcast. My name is Zach and I'm here with my wife, Vanessa. Hello, hello. This is episode 11, Unarmed and Defeated. In this episode, we'll break down our authority as sons, how the enemy only has the authority we give consent, and our foe is unarmed and defeated. (laughs) Unarmed (laughs) Unarmed and and defeated. defeated. If you get it, no arms, no feet, just so there's clarification. (laughs) Yeah, so actually, um, when we first started talking about... Okay. Okay. Really no feet, but n- no legs though too. <laughs> um, when we first started talking about what we were going to do for episode 11, um, I was reminded of, it was like, it was like a funny meme type thing where they were saying like the reason that Satan's called a serpent is because he's been unarmed and defeated. And mm. I thought it was pretty funny, but it's actually really true and, and extremely accurate. And I know for years that you've been saying that, like... Yeah, that was actually a revelation God gave me years ago. I didn't even really... Th- it's really funny that, I mean, that's just God. He gives other people the same revelation. Yeah. But the way I, he, the way he showed me, because, you know, I would always been told, because we were in a lot of deliverance beforehand. I still do deliverance. We still minister that. Um, but it was very, very focused on the enemy. It was very focused on what the demonic, like the power and the authority. It was like, all right, demons not leaving somebody. They're just, they're so strong. Or, mm-hmm. you know, it took three hours to deliver somebody. I'm not saying that it doesn't, but I'm just saying like, we give the devil more of a foothold and more authority than he actually deserves. Yeah. So the Lord gave me this kind of illustration that I'm like Mike Tyson and I'm in the ring and my, my enemy is a dude in a wheelchair with no arms and no legs. Mm-hmm. That was the image he gave me. But he told me that we have the opportunity or we do give him the the, uh, the authority by giving him legs, mm-hmm. giving him arms, and giving him actually a whole arsenal to be able to fight us with. Yeah. So we actually, the consent that he, what we give him mm-hmm. or the enemy, you know, that's the only way he's able to come in our lives and cause havoc is if we give him consent to be able to do so. Right. So that was kind of like the illustration yeah. that the Lord gave it's me. It's such a good illustration. It's helped too. me so much. Yeah, same with me. Every time you would say that, I was like, it really, it really put it into perspective that I was like, yeah, Satan literally can't do anything to me except try to speak into my life. Like, he's, um, he's all bark and no bite. Like, right. he can't do anything unless you listen to that voice. Yeah. Um, and then you start giving him not just his arms, his legs, but you start handing him your own weapons. So everything that God's given you, like, you've got your sword, you've got, you know, your shield, all this stuff. You start literally just being like, okay, well, right. here you go. Just right. like how, like, when we're going to talk about in Genesis 3, how... Adam and Eve in the garden when Satan deceived them, they literally gave up all authority that they had, all the dominion that they had. And that's why right. Satan now ran the world no longer man. Um, that's why Jesus had to come back and, you know, become second Adam so that we could take back authority over earth, heaven right, and like earth. Tear the veil. Tear, yeah, exactly. So, but I just think it's so crazy that... Um, so I guess actually we could go into Genesis three because that yeah, kind of goes into what we're, yeah, what we're talking about. So, um, so yeah, so in Genesis three, um, Satan got Eve to question what God had spoken to her. So right. he didn't come and force her to eat anything. He didn't force her to eat the fruit. He didn't take it and say, Hey, this is yours. Yeah, you need to, force. right. It wasn't by force. It was by getting her to question what God had told her. Um, and then after she had eaten the fruit, um, God curses Satan and tells him that, you know, you're, you're going to slither on the ground all the days of your life and eat dust, (laughs) you know, but that he literally had no arms and no legs. Um, that's pretty funny. It is. (laughs) Can you imagine that? Your greatest enemy has no arms and no legs. Yeah. I'm like, come on. Yeah. (laughs) Um, I think that's a, it's a very important it's a very, very important thing that we understand this. Yeah. Um, that we give the enemy the consent, mm-hmm. right? And just like with Eve, like he didn't come by force. Mm-hmm. You know, Satan didn't come by force, forcing her to eat, right. forcing her to understand, mm-hmm. or forcing the lie in her mind. Mm-hmm. He just gave her. He made her question mm-hmm. what God had spoken right. through the twisting of what was already spoken. Mm-hmm. Right. Did God say that? Did God say that? Is what he said true or do you believe otherwise? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and therefore it was kind of like what you just said, like in the garden, there was no sin. 
there was ultimate maximum authority and gifting mm-hmm. and inheritance to the fullest full dominion full dominion yeah. full um full relationship with god mm-hmm. And what Eve did when she when she questioned the truth that God gave her because of what Satan had said, not only did she, you know, kind of like like you know Satan gave that lie, but like like you said earlier, she gave over her her authority. Mm-hmm. She put her shield, all of her armor, her sword, her yeah. inheritance, her crowns, mm-hmm. all that, and just handed it over to Satan, and said, "God, you don't fit here anymore." Mm. That's wow. exactly what happened. Yeah. It was like, you know, God didn't kick us out of the garden. We kicked God out of the garden. Mm. We do that. Yeah. We when we sin, does God is God the one who gets up and runs? No, mm-hmm. he's always chasing us on our prodigal road. Yeah. He's always looking for us to be in relations with him. Mm-hmm. He never leaves our side even when we're in the darkest moment of our lives. Right. So who's the one who kicks him out? It's us. We do. Yeah. Well, the same thing with Satan, right? Right. How does Satan leave and how does Satan come? Mm -hmm. Does he come unwillingly? No, he knocks from the outside, Mm -hmm. but we're the ones who open the door and allow him to come on in. Right. And if we don't want him there, we open the door and kick him out. Mm. So just like God has gives us free will, it's based off of a spiritual transaction. He has actually by the way that he's created spiritual law, Mm -hmm. we he has to abide by that law by saying we have to choose mm. to allow him to come in or to say you're not welcome. Right. The same thing happens with Satan. Mm-hmm. He doesn't just to come live in here because he just is who he is. Right. By our, you know, by our lineage, I guess um, Catholics would call it original sin, mm-hmm. you know, but being passed down through generations. If you're not born again, putting your life in Christ and you haven't been washed clean, mm-hmm. then you are still under that. Right. You know, but that's only by, you know, that it's it's, it's by, uh, I guess you would say illegal legalism yeah you know like it's just a legal state but like you're able to break that and to kick him out of the house Mm -hmm. he doesn't need to reside there even when you don't want him there yeah so how much consent do we really give him right it's so big we give him his authority yeah so um actually i wanted to go on to uh because the same thing that we saw with eve in the garden we saw with jesus Mm -hmm. um when he had his 40-day fast in the desert Mm -hmm. right so it has already been spoken you see when jesus countered uh, the devil he yeah. said it's been it's written right right you, you know so when he came <laughs> it was it's so funny because jesus already knew yeah he he called himself son of man mm-hmm. actually i heard this from this teaching um i don't know exactly how accurate it is i didn't do much research into it but he's a theologian okay and just blew my mind where he said um the old hebrew culture when they would call themselves they would call themselves sons of god mm. it was a very common thing to be called a son of god oh, wow. but to be called a son of man mm-hmm. had a had almost like it was almost like a deifying it was actually different so when we wow. hear son of man yeah. in the english right. or just in american culture like okay well man is us right, right humans right. and god is god yeah well in the hebrew culture son of god was common and son of man was considered divine wow so yeah so like Jesus called himself the son of man. Yeah. So when he's in the four, and you know, when he's in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights being, and then he comes to be tempted by Satan, mm-hmm. he's like, no, he's like, you're going to try to offer me what's already mine. Mm-hmm. You're taking the place of Godship mm-hmm. and saying that I have the authority to give it to you. Right. It's like, dude, it's already mine. Mm. It's written. Yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah. So right there, what he did with Eve, he tried to do with Satan. I mean, try to do with Jesus. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He, he, he. He told Eve, what God told you was, is that true? Mm-hmm. I'm going to question it. Right. And they says, here, well, you already know what God said, but is what God said true? Or can I give you, mm-hmm. can I give you all the inheritance? Right. It was back to the same. It's a schemes. twisting. Mm-hmm. It's a twisting. And it's a, it's a, uh, it's an accusation yeah. of, have you heard from God the truth? Mm. It's a twisting and an accusation. Yeah. So that's what, so when Satan comes to attack, when he comes to make his move, mm-hmm. he's a one trick pony. Yeah, it's so true. He's a one trick pony. Every single time it's always to accuse, mm-hmm. to give a lie that brings confusion mm-hmm. or something along yeah. those lines that will bring like condemnation or something that will contradict what God has already spoken yeah. or something that God wants for you to know. Yeah. So when the enemy speaks and it's going to be anything and this is just for anything. Yeah. Oh man, I'm just not worthy. Mm. Well, God says you're worthy. Right. Uh, I'm not loved. Well, God loves you. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm not anointed. Well, you are anointed. Right. Anything that you feel that's not going to encourage and lift you up, Mm -hmm. it's either a lie that you have believed or the enemy is currently speaking that to you right now. Yeah. And now it's our obligation as sons 
to say, okay, is this a truth mm -hmm. or is this a lie that's right. in my heart that I need to lose? So we've talked about um, head knowledge and heart knowledge. Yeah. Not all heart knowledge is good knowledge. Right. We can, we turn scripture, which we, if we had to have a uh, scripture head knowledge, mm -hmm. it's through encounter and through the, so through the Holy Spirit speaking this to us yeah. and through experience, this head knowledge will become heart knowledge. Mm. Right. But through our lives, through the renewal of our mind, it's, it's up to us with the Holy Spirit's power and strength mm -hmm. to overcome the heart knowledge we currently had right. to put on his heart knowledge. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. It's breaking down the strongholds. Right. The, 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 um, the lies and those roots that we've had inside of us right. that need to get kicked out so we can put on his truth. Yeah. So the enemy will do the same as that thing. He will present a lie mm -hmm. in hopes that you either do already believe it and it'll trigger or it'll contradict what God has already spoken in hopes to kick out his truth to put his truth to put his false truth in right. there. Right. And that's why it says that we need to constantly renew our minds. Right. Um, because our like we and we've said this in past ep episodes is like our whole lives, um, if we haven't been walking in truth, if we didn't know the person of truth, um, then we do. There's all these lies that the enemy has spoken to us from the outside world that are buried deep in our heart that we have to kick out. Um, and the best way in doing that is asking God, who do you see me as? What, who am I to you? Um, you know, reading the Bible and the, the promises that he's given us, relationship. um, relationship. Yeah. And I know it always goes back to like secret place. It always goes back to intimacy. Right. That's really what it is, is, um, getting to know the person of truth. Absolutely. So John eight thirty two, and you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. Mm -hmm. Simple. It's so, so simple. Yeah. And this is, a, I'm going to go into a whole topic from this. Yeah. Um, really quick after this <laughs> <laughs> teaser. Um, so, so actually this is interesting. So the Greek word for truth actually means reality. Wow. Okay. So Jesus is the person of truth. He is truth in, in its entirety. Mm -hmm. He is truth. Right. So when we believe on him, mm -hmm. we believe on truth and he is the one who makes us free. Right. And he is reality. And he is reality. Uh -huh. If we are to embrace the one called truth, the person who is truth, then we are to accept and put on a new reality. Mm. This reality is freedom from death, religion, sin, and the grasp of Satan over our lives. Wow. Once we come into the understanding of who truth is mm -hmm. and that we are to love and to, and, to, and to bring on truth into our whole heart, our mm -hmm. spirit, our soul, everything. Mm. Yeah. Our reality, we are a new creation. It says in Corinthians, yeah. we're a new creation and we are brand new with a new reality, a new start. That whole, that, that second, that second chance yeah. that everyone cries about in the whole world. Mm hmm believer, non-believer, yeah. everyone cries about, I wish I had a second chance. Right. You believe me on Jesus Christ. He gives you a whole new reality where you can start from zero mm. and, and you, you can start and a you clean can, slate, clean slate, but not just that clean before you started with clean slate yeah. with your own heart and with mm. your own power and strength. Mm -hmm. This time you do it with the one who created your whole destiny. Wow. The one who knows exactly which spot is going to be a hole mm -hmm. and which spot is going to be a place for you to walk. Wow. So many, so many times we walked and we thought we were this is down the right path and we find ourselves in a sinkhole and we sink. Mm -hmm. There's another time where we find ourselves in this place and we trip and fall. Mm -hmm. But God has the one where it's this stone has a piece, has blood on it, then this stone over here has blood on it, yeah. and now we step from place to place to place because of that new reality, that new truth that has set us free. He is now our GPS in life, mm -hmm. and we can have a second start without the enemy from the inside yeah. causing havoc. Right. It's yeah. powerful. It is so powerful. It's crazy. Um, also, um, when you were talking about the fact that it's Jesus is the person of truth. He is truth, the being truth. Right. Um, and God's word is truth and he's the word, right? Mm -hmm. um, I was just thinking how Jesus said to love the Lord your God with all your heart. We actually listened to it yesterday um, during the sermon to love God with your whole heart, your whole mind. Your, you know, your whole soul and your strength, all your strength. Mm -hmm. And um, I was thinking that I was like, if we're loving the being of truth, then that means that we have to know truth completely in our whole heart, our whole mind, soul and strength. Right. 
Actually, you know what? This is actually awesome because I know in church yesterday, Trisha talked about like why in that scripture it says soul, mind, body, or soul, mind, strength, and heart. Mm -hmm. Like to love God with all of that. Yeah. But it doesn't say spirit. Right. Because a spirit has already been made pure. It's already been made perfect and right. God's spirit dwells in there. So it's it's already loving God to his fullest. Yeah. It's very interesting because there's, there's times like where I get attacked. Mm hmm or I'll be in a place of temptation mm -hmm. and out of nowhere, I'll start to hear worship music playing in my mind. Yeah. And I'm like, Hey God, are you sending this to me? And he told me that this is my spirit singing worship to him mm. continually. Wow. You know, like in heaven, like they're saying, Holy, Holy, Holy is mm -hmm. the Lord. You know, it's like, it's continual worship. That's, yeah. that's the main activity in heaven mm -hmm. is worshiping God. Yeah. So if our spirit is always on the mind of Christ continually is in one-on-one -on -one unity perfectly with God yeah. in unison, then would not, wouldn't it be worshiping as well? Yeah. So what's really cool about this is that we don't need to change our spirits. Right. We don't need to do that. We yeah. don't need to work on making our spirits clean. Mm -hmm. We don't need to work on it. We don't need to kick the devil out of our spirits and, mm. oh my gosh, my spirit's corrupted, all this stuff, or yeah. am I saved? Or These truths mm -hmm. of salvation, these truths of, of authority, sonship, mm -hmm. set free, all these things yeah. are embedded inside of your spirit. Wow. Every truth. Yeah. The kingdom reality is in your belly. Yeah. It's inside of your spirit. And it's waiting to come out. Yeah. It wants to. It's revelatory glory. Yeah. Inside of your being. Mm. In another dimension. I don't know how that works in the spirit though. Yeah. But it's inside the spirit and it's right there for you to have. Wow. We just need to tap into it. Mm -hmm. So with the soul in our body and all that extra stuff that yeah. the enemy does play on. Right. It's so much easier than we think. Yeah. Right. Like we see, we see it. In, I have this put in there, but we see in Romans seven, mm -hmm. where Paul is like, "Hey, well, what my flesh does, I don't want to do. Right. My spirit wants to do otherwise. Yeah. Right. And there's this conflicting battle. Yeah. But you see in Romans eight that he's just thankful for the Holy Spirit because now he can overcome the works of the flesh. Yes. Right. Yes. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's the battle. The enemy will come and try to trigger what's in the flesh already, mm -hmm. or whatever the flesh wants. Right. It'll trigger it. It'll mm -hmm. try to make it worse. It'll try to hear. Go over there. That was your past desire. Yeah. But that's why the Holy Spirit is in us to give us strength to come wow. from that inward out. Mm -hmm. So now our works, our soul, all these things that go into the fruit that we produce uh -huh. is cleansed based off of the Spirit. And that's why, like in the like, I think it was two episodes ago, the Lord had spoken to me. That, you know, we said the, that the flesh is always an enmity towards God and yeah, that it can right. never be on the side of God. Mm -hmm. It's always going against us. Mm -hmm. Yes and no. Right. Until it can't. Right. If your spirit is completely, if like, if you're so in the spirit that you might as well just be a spirit <laughs> floating around in, in, in physical. Walking in the spirit. Walking in the spirit. Yeah. Is, then right there, your flesh is in full submission to your spirit and right. whatever your f spirit wants, your flesh will do. And right. whatever your flesh if it's if it's in submission to mm -hmm, it, mm -hmm. it has to have the desires of the spirit. It has to line up to the kingdom. Right. So yeah. it's the same thing as I'm a sinner saved by grace. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I'm mm -hmm. a sinner. I'm a sinner. If you constantly say that I'm a sinner yeah. saved by grace, you're never going to stop sinning and you're going to mm. be under grace. Wow. But instead, God says, once you believe in me and you trust on me, yeah. you are now a saint. Right. Well, your flesh is against me until it's not against me. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So. This right here, when we believe those lies, those mm -hmm. are lies from the enemy, yep. and we give him a foothold, and we give him consent to come in and to play, to throw us around like a rag doll, yeah. because of these strongholds that he has, a, that he can just play with like a, with a, like a fiddle. Mm. He can just go around there and start playing a whole song of garbage of lies right. in your heart for the to make it fruit that you produce. Yeah. And now that spreads to everyone else. Right. It's so it's it's actually really toxic it, when you think about it. It is. And it's it's actually really crazy to think about too because I feel like the uh, amongst uh many lies that the enemy has tried to come out with me since we've been walking with the Lord, I feel like the number one lie that the enemy always tries to get me to think about is um it, it always tries to diminish my authority, always tries to diminish who I am in the kingdom and who actually lives inside of me. Mm. So it's the voice of the enemy is constantly trying to get us to come in line, not just with the, the lie, but to diminish the truth that dwells in us. Right. So when you start to like, like for me, when I start to get my flesh, you start to forget that it's like, I've been filled with the Holy Spirit. I've been filled with the kingdom of God, right. you know, but the enemy wants you to come in and say, Oh, but your flesh is so strong. You're, you're, um, you're just really emotional. You're, you know, all these, these different things. And it's like, 
yes, that may be true. I have these emotions. I have these feelings. But ultimately, the one who is inside of me is stronger than anything that is coming against me. Mm-hmm. You know? So I, I don't know. It's I'm trying I'm trying to wrap back to the unarmed defeated because I feel like so many Christians think that Satan's just like like they're like, oh well the the demonic's so strong and I just can't get out of my head and I can't get out of these lies and I what would you say for the people that feel like that, that they're feeling like there's this sense of like hopelessness? Well, first I would I would I would ask them to have a perspective shift because mm-hmm. everything is a par- we're, we're all in paradigms. Yeah, like this is this is a, a the way that you see life, or the way you see things and perceive it. Yeah, is a paradigm. Reality is reality. Yeah. So for me, my reality before was I'm getting attacked, mm-hmm. right? And I can't handle this. Yeah. And I'm constantly dwelling on this attack. Mm-hmm. I'm dwelling on what the enemy is doing. So right there, mm. now I'm being consumed in what my mind is thinking, right? Yeah. What I'm constantly in. Right. But the reality was, mm-hmm. it was only a small part of my day. Wow. So I'm allowing, let's say 90, let's even say 70% of my day mm-hmm. is with God. I have no attacks. I'm doing good. Yeah. But the 30%, the enemy tries to come and tempt, to cause attack, right? It cause attack. Mm-hmm. Well, think about that. You're going to rely on the 30% of your day to govern what you should be thinking the whole entire day. Wow. And the rest of your life. Because if you if you focus on it, mm-hmm. you're eventually going to give into it. You're eventually going to become what you think about. Yeah, totally. Right? Like, yeah. I don't, I don't think about walking away from sin. Yeah. I think about the one who isn't sin. Mm. And I walk into his arms. And by there, I have relations and love and so much intimacy that I forget that sin even is even knocking at the door. Yeah. Because I'm so consumed in love. Right. By then, you know, mm. by that you don't sin. Yeah. So it's, what are you focused on? Yeah. Are you focused on de- the demonic being everywhere? Right. I know it's really big in deliverance. Yeah. You know, I'm not knocking deliverance at all. I love ministering to it because it brings so much freedom. Yeah, you need deliverance. But there is a lot of, there's there's a, um, a company of ministers out there mm-hmm. all over that it's like, everything has a demon. Yeah. I go to pray for somebody. I'm going to bless. I'm, I can't even bless them. I'm just going to try to cast a demon out of them. Right. Right. I'm like, they can be doing great, but there's a demon somewhere. Yeah. So if your focus is always a demonic, mm-hmm. you're probably always going to go through warfare. Mm. These people go through warfare all the time. It's always, yeah. I'm being persecuted. I'm going through warfare. Yeah. I need prayer for this. I need prayer for that. And I'm like, so I don't see much love. I don't see much joy and peace. Yeah. Right. Like, actually, I heard this from Ben Armstrong. This is so fire. He's like, I'm not a demon slayer. Mm. I'm a kingdom establisher. Ooh. And I'm like, wow. Hit that. Yeah. Think about that. How many people or how many, uh, yeah, we, we spoke about this earlier today. Um, when we, when we look into ministry, right, when we see deliverance ministries, we see all this stuff, um, how many times do we see that there are deliverance ministries and so many people in the Christian walk know so much about the demonic. Yeah. They know what Satan's doing. They know it to a T. They're saying, yeah. oh, this is what he's doing. This is how they get you. This is this, 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 this. Yeah. But they can never say, I know the name of my angel. <laughs> Damn. Um, I know how many angels I have. I know I know what the, uh, the Lord is speaking to me right now about a new revelation of his kingdom. Yeah. I know this new cool thing that he's been speaking to me about his love. Mm-hmm. I know how the kingdom operates. I know all the laws of the courtrooms of heaven. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's our perspective is on the accuser and not on the intercessor. Wow. Right. So that's think, big. Think about that. Yeah. If our focus, like I said, is on that 30% or because for me, it, it was even 10%. Yeah. That 10% of my day, the devil doesn't need to attack you all day. No. He needs you to get, he needs you to, to fall off the cliff. Honestly, it takes. Off of 1%. Right. Yeah, it takes like one second. Yeah, you can yeah. have 99% of your day, but if you're focused on that 1% that goes a little off. Yeah. And you get consumed in that. Yeah. That's all the devil needs to get a foothold. Right. Right. So, but look at the whole span of it. Put that on a chart. Yeah. Put that on a business chart yeah. or an, like, a, like an analytics or something. 99% and then 1%. Mm-hmm. My goodness, you'd be like, can you imagine if you reach 99% of people in a business? Yeah. You are flushing cash. <laughs> it's so Your true. Your business is thriving. Yeah. Even if you hit 60%. You know, businesses try to aim for 1%. Yeah. 1 to 10%. Mm-hmm. That's good. Yeah. So when... When Satan, uh, when Satan only can only consume you one to ten percent of your day, even twenty mm-hmm. percent, under fifty yeah. percent, you're winning, right? 
But when he comes and attacks, we don't look at that other percentage that, that Jesus is winning. Yeah. We look at the part that where Satan is, oh, he's here right now. This is hard. Yeah. We're giving him all this leeway. I'm giving right. him this foothold. Mm. He's just knocking from the outside. Yeah. I I wish I could have found that um, quote from um, yesterday where um, during the sermon, Tertia was talking about, um, you know, I, I'm going to butcher it, but. I'll try my best um, where she was saying that the wherever pretty much wherever the devil is, wherever darkness is, there's the, the devil. So there's a lot of people that are like, you know, Christians can't have demons, whether, you know, the, all those the, all theological right. arguments. But in um, first John, it says that in him, there is no darkness in Jesus. There is no darkness that he is completely light. He's good. Right. You know, he separated you know, the light from the dark in Genesis and he said, he separates good from evil and he is good. So anywhere where we're not focusing on the good, we're not focusing on God. Right. And I think that it's important to understand, like when we were talking about it this morning, that it's so important to understand what the enemy is doing, but not focus on what the enemy is doing. So you can be aware, you can mm -hmm. understand, um, you know, you can see the tactics and you can recognize it, but you don't dwell in it. You don't live there. That's not where you dwell. You, you're seated in heavenly places. The enemy is underneath your feet. Mm. So if you are constantly looking at, oh, this is the dark stuff that's happening. This is the bad stuff that's happening. Then you're going to be consumed by the darkness. And in God, there's no darkness. Right. So if we're constantly, um, and I know, and I'm speaking this from experience because there was a time a few months ago where it seemed like everything in my life was just falling apart. Like I felt like I didn't know what to do, where to turn. I kept, you know, I kept pushing forward with the Lord. And finally the Lord convicted me one day that he's, he's like, it's because you're looking at, at the negative too much. You're seeing all the bad things, but you're not seeing all the good that I'm doing in it. Right. He's like, if you focus, if you see the good, you see God. If you see the bad, you see Satan. Mm -hmm. He's like, so choose what you want to see. That's your reality. That's your truth. That's good. Yeah. That's powerful. And and again, like I've said in every other episode, all this goes back to the secret place. Yeah. Right? It all goes so, back to relationship with him. It does. Yeah. So back to that 70-30 thing again. Yeah. You know, if you're in relationship with God, mm -hmm. you know, and you're continually seeking after his heart and Satan comes at your door 30% of the day, 20% yeah. of the day, not only will... Jesus help you overcome him, but he's going to show you how he and his, how God himself would handle the situation. Yeah. So if our mindset is focused on the demonic and we seek God for uh, other things, I know if people like, I'm going to actually going to go into that in a second. Okay. Um, but we seek him on other things, not to how to overcome or how to eat, how you would do it. Not because yeah. we, we, we recite yeah. all the time. Mm -hmm. We'll open up the scriptures and say, Enemy, you have no, f you, you are unarmed and defeated. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We'll say, you are this, you are that, it is written, it is so. But what is God telling you? Mm -hmm. Be consumed in my heart. Yeah. I want to show you a new revelation. Yeah. Right? Right. What, what, what if we're so, what, like we said in the, uh, I mean, other ones too, like, what if we just go straight to scripture and we start to just read what it says, mm -hmm. but we don't even hear what God is telling us? Mm -hmm. You know, like, yeah. like, the scripture, like like most Bibles have like over a thousand pages. It's like 2000 pages. Yeah. You can go in there. God can show you scripture, mm -hmm. but you shouldn't go in there. Like, Hey, I'm going to look for my daily scriptures on, um, when I get attacked right. or are we going to sit in the presence of God and say, Hey Lord, what, how do you want me to overcome this? Right. He, it, what it doesn't are you, mean, what are you doing in this? Right. What are you trying to teach me through this? Right. It's always the focus back onto him and what he's doing rather than what the enemy is trying to do. Right. And, yeah. and, 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 and it doesn't mean that what you're reading and what you're speaking is false, Yeah. but it may just not be in context with what God wants to do. Right. You know, he may want to like uh, reveal a new part about himself. Mm -hmm. Whatever constantly going back to the old revelation, to the old manna yeah. to overcome the new things. Mm. You're not right? going to eat yesterday's bread. No. Yeah. He wants to give you new stuff. It doesn't mean you can't reminisce on it and you can't go back to it to speak truth. Right. The, the scriptures are are old and new. Mm -hmm. But if he's giving you old revelation, maybe he wants to give you new revelation. Yeah. Maybe you're, you know, maybe you're going through a specific attack. Like here, let, hypothetically, let's just say this. Mm -hmm. um, the enemy is coming at you with depression. Mm -hmm. Right. And before the Lord spoke, uh, speaks to you, 
I love you, your son, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, you are worthy, right? Yeah. Okay, that's uh, that's amazing. And that before that helps you overcome that. Mm-hmm. What if you're reciting that and it's not overcome, it's just not cutting it right now? Yeah. But what if, because you're reciting the old stuff that he's giving you, what if he wants to show you, here, I want to take you into a vision. Mm. Here, I want to speak to you a new song. Yeah. Here, I want to give you a prophecy. Mm-hmm. Or I want to include you in something new that I'm doing. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's when, it, when we go, I, I don't know what the point I'm trying to make. I think the point I'm trying to make is yeah. God is constantly wanting to do something new. Yeah. And you run to him mm-hmm. when things are, are looking a little weird. Right. And your perspective is, you know what? Satan is still here. He's trying to cause havoc. Yeah. But I'm going to go straight to my father. Yeah. Right? Because bottom line, all Satan can do is try to twist the truth. Right. All he can do is try to lie to you. But if you, what, is, what uh, scripture is it where it says to resist the devil and he shall flee? Mm-hmm. And every time we talked about it, you were like, you always related it to a, like a dog, <laughs> which I feel bad relating dogs to Satan because puppers, puppers are cute. But um, like a, do- <laughs> a dog at the dinner table, right? right? So constantly nagging at you, barking at you, trying to get your attention so that you'll give him some food but eventually if you just ignore him long enough he's gonna go lay down because he's gonna be tired of barking at you right and so it's the same thing with satan the longer that you just keep your eyes fixated on jesus because that is your first love that's who you're you're focused on that's the kingdom you're of then satan eventually is gonna be like "Eh, this isn't working i'm gonna go try somewhere else yeah your focus is on the heavenly things not on what the demonic is doing right and that's, um, and that's like, you, you should know the tactics, yes. you should know how to overcome him, mm-hmm. but that doesn't mean you be consumed. Right. You know, for like he'll have you there too. Yeah. So it's like, you can understand that the enemy is real. He's alive. He is working in this world today. We can see that. Um, you can know that his tactics and the ways that he tries to come at you and be aware of it. But when you do that, I'm aware that that dog is barking at me, but I'm going to ignore it and I'm going to focus on my food. Right. I'm not going to give him any of what I've got on my plate. What God has given me, I'm not going to give that to him. Right. So the truth and the reality that Jesus has given me, that's not going to go into his mouth. He's not going to be able to eat that, Mm. you know? So I think the more that we realize that Satan is a serpent and God cursed him to crawl on his belly. That's how we have to remember him is that he's, he's eating dust and right. that's all he can eat. He can't eat my manna. Right. Yeah. Amen. Um, so this is another aspect of the, uh, the secret place I want to get into. Cause this is a pretty, um, I would say, I, I, don't, I don't like saying a debated topics. I hate just when I hear Christian and debate, like Christians should not debate each other. Um, but when I, but when I read this, it, you guys will know it's, it's a it's a pretty debated about topic. So, um, it's Matthew seventeen seventeen through twenty one. I'm not going to read the whole scripture, mm-hmm. um, but you guys can reference it. Um, it's when you know the the, the disciples went to go cast a demon out of the boy, and they weren't able to, right? And Jesus right. says, mm-hmm. "You faithless and perverse generation, mm-hmm. how long am I how, like how long will I be with you?" Um, but he goes on and then he starts to talk about the parable of the mustard seed with just a little bit of, you know, with yeah. the, faith is a mustard seed. Yeah. You can move mountains. Right. Right. So he's, and so, and then afterwards he says, however, this kind of demon will not go unless, uh, except by prayer and fasting. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay. So you th- see three aspects. Jesus says you're a, f- a faithless and perverse generation. Then he says, faith of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. Mm-hmm. And then he says, prayer and fasting will cast this demon out. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So you see these three things. Two of them are similar because, you know, uh, faithlessness. Mm-hmm. And then you have faith of a mustard seed can move mountains. So just right. a little bit of faith will, would you say, cast out this demon. Right. right? Uh-huh. Who says, no, prayer and fasting. Right. So Jesus was the example mm-hmm. of someone who would pray and fast. Right. Right. Yeah. He was daily praying and fasting like yeah. that was his thing yeah right that was his thing for real like no that was his thing he's like i gotta go to the mountain i gotta meet my father yeah he's constantly praying and fasting right so a lot of people will say okay well he's supposed to be praying and fasting every single time you go into a deliverance mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i don't think he's saying that yeah because i think that's a workspace thing right um you know what i'm saying so right yeah. so this is where i believe the lord spoke this yeah. and this is a revelation for me it doesn't say this but this is what i believe that he spoke mm-hmm. when he said these, this demon will not come out through, but by prayer and fasting. Yeah. Since Jesus prayed and fasted all the time, did he pray and fast because he had no faith? No. <laughs> did he pray and fast because he couldn't cast a demon out and he needed to? No. No. He prayed and fasted because that was where he got to know his father. Right. 
when we get to go when you get to know your father yeah that's where revelation happens mm mm-hmm. He knew his identity. Mm-hmm. He knew his authority as a, as a son of man. Yeah. He knew how demons would get casted out. He mm. knew that being a son, he had authority on earth. Every single thing that was on earth, he had authority in. And on heaven, mm. he was above the angels. Yeah. In spirit. But on you know, when he came down, he yeah. put himself under. Right. But he had authority and yeah. he knew his identity in the father. Right. And he had relations with him. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So maybe he was telling them, by prayer and fasting, you'll get to know who you truly are. Mm, that's how you get gain faith. Absolutely. Yeah. Because I know, I know, like you can, you can still pray and fast, like yeah. for breakthrough. Right. Um, I don't pray and fast, and actually, I don't even. I, don't, I I'll pray for myself, mm-hmm. but I immediately will go in there because I want to know who he is. Right. And then I'll, and then I'll make my request. Mm-hmm. Right. I don't seek his hand before I seek his face. Yeah. I seek his f- face and by default, his hand will give. Right. Because I'm a son. Right. I don't need to beg my father for anything. Right. I show him, hey, father, I want this. Yeah. And through diligence, he will, he will grant it. Yeah. You know, but it's not a work. Right. Right. And faith is a gift, mm-hmm. but faith is, is a byproduct of you encountering him in the secret place. Yeah, totally. So it's very important that we know that when we go to pray and fast and these de- and the demon can't, isn't being casted out. Mm-hmm. When we go to pray and fast is we're learning who we are as a son right. in heaven. Right. Cause we never want to put anything back on our own shoulders. We, right. you know, we're, it's not us who are doing it. it. I always like go back to the sons of Siva whenever we talk about stuff like this. Up, so. Yeah. And it's so funny. Cause it's like kind of feel bad for them. <laughs> Cause it's like, yeah. here they are. They're like, we're casting you out in, you know, um, the name that, the, the name yeah. that Paul preaches, the you know, Jesus. Jesus yeah. yeah. And, um, and the demon attacks them and strips them naked and, you know, <laughs> and they, they run away. And it's like, it's because they were not operating in the authority of Jesus. They were just doing it by his name. Well, listen to what they said. We know who Paul, we know who Jesus is and we know who Paul is, but we don't know who you are. Right. Right. When you're in spirit, Mm -hmm. like Jesus was praying, fasted up. Yeah. He knew who God was and God knew who, knew who he was. Yeah. The same thing with Matthew 7, right? Yeah. We see it like, Lord, Lord, did we not do all these things in your name? He's like, yeah, well, okay, well, depart from me. I never knew you. Yeah. There there was an intimacy and a relationship that Jesus and Paul had that the sons of Sceva didn't. Right. And and in the spirit that showed and the devil, the devil's there. They knew, knew it. that there was a lack of relationship with right. them. Right. Because like, they were called Jewish exorcists. Uh-huh. You were not titled an exorcist unless that's what your occupation is or that's right. what you do. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. So the fact that that's what they do and they did it on the authority of Jesus, but didn't know who he was. Yeah. That right there is a clear example that they're, that them needing to pray and fast the disciples mm-hmm. was based off of having relationship and being known in the spirit by who, by God knowing who they were. Right. And it showed they had like a name tag in the spirit. Yeah. That says, I am a son. Right. And that's how I always actually see it is like, I I feel like, and of course I haven't seen it in the spirit, but I feel like the enemy can see your, your closeness to God. Like the, the closer Mm -hmm. you are to him. So the more that you've been, you know, prayed and fasted up, it's like the, the more that you've come into that identity with him, the more you're in that mirror image of him because you're walking in the spirit. You're trying to, you're killing your flesh when you pray and you fast, right. you know? And so I think that's why it's like, it's, you're, you're coming into likeness with him mm-hmm. and, um, they can see that in the spirit. They can see, oh, they look that, that person looks just like Jesus. I, I ain't messing with that. And right. they go. You know, but if you're praying and fasting because you think that you have to do something, they're going to see that too. And they're actually in turn not going to go, you know, Mm -hmm. so it's coming into the likeness of God. Right. That's, you know, that's the biggest thing is, are you a mere image of Jesus? Right. And the sons of Sceva, you know, they didn't have the authority. They didn't have the relationship with God. Yeah. They did it in the name of Jesus, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like the Matthew 7 again. They right. did it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. They saw it happen. Right. I mean, we don't have full context considering considering God, Jesus just like named off things really fast. Yeah. But did they actually cast out demons? Like they, they, they did, but 
were they effective at it? Was right. it 10 out of 10 or was it Sons of Sceva? Right, type? right. You know, like, yeah. sure, did they cast out the name? Because in the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus is powerful. Yeah. But when we cast out a demon when you're in Jesus, yeah. you do it in Jesus' yeah. name, not in, because you're saying in the name of Jesus. Right. It's not some magic word. It's no. because you're operating in the power of his name. You're operating, yes, you're yeah. operating in the place or the, the, uh, the position that you're holding in heaven. Yes. That's where you operate out of. Exactly. Right. Yeah. You're like, 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 you're going in there as an amb- as an ambassador, and mm-hmm. you're an ambassador of like, of, I don't know, like Costco or something. <laughs> you're gonna go in there with your name tag, with your badge on, all yeah. this stuff, because everyone knows here he's here to rep Costco. He's gonna say, "Here, I'm in the name of Costco." Right. You know, he's like, "No, you can just see it. He's coming in here, and we know that he is." Based I like off that of- you chose Costco. <laughs> Marshall's been getting me on the Costco <laughs> kick lately. But you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. it's it's already showing based off a of relationship. Yeah. Right? You know who you are serving and you know what name you're doing it in. Right. Right. And the reason why I'm saying that is because this whole entire thing goes back to how little the demons actually are in our lives. Yeah. You know, it's very common now, like deliverance is becoming huge. Mm-hmm. You know, and we see these deliverances that last for three or four hours, see some deliverance, even like 30 minutes. Yeah. You know, where they're growling, convulsing on the ground. Mm-hmm. Like people are talking to them and saying, how long have you been there? Hundreds of years. Right, right. You know, and I'm not downplaying it. Yeah. Uh, that wasn't to dishonor. Right. But I think when that's what we focus on. Yeah. I think we lose the whole entire aspect and it becomes almost like a strive. Right. You know, becomes like, a work instead of just sitting in who you are, who right. who Jesus has given you the gift of being. Right. So, like, I, I know a commonly spoken thing in the in the deliverance ministries are, mm-hmm. are um, um, deliverance is the children's bread. Yeah. Right. So when we look at look at uh, Moses mm-hmm. and the Israelites, they were being delivered out of Egypt. Mm-hmm. They went through the Red Sea that was parted, and they went into the desert. Yeah. That was deliverance. Yeah. There was no demons being casted out. Right. The reason why I'm saying this is and the same thing goes with healing. Mm-hmm. The reason why I'm saying this is because deliverance isn't necessarily just casting a demon out of somebody. Yeah. Deliverance is the children's bread because you are putting on the person of truth, mm. putting on a new reality, mm-hmm. and you are losing the strongholds that you once believed in. Yeah. And you're putting on the truth and the new reality that is Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. That is deliverance. Yeah. And Lord spoke to me this about Generation wow. Z, actually. He said that they, that this is a stubborn generation, mm-hmm. as in that they will be fixated on what the Lord has already spoken and they will not be easily swayed mm. and that their deliverance will come from the putting on of truth. Wow. Strongholds, and, I, and I've seen this a lot when yeah. I go to minister deliverance to people, and actually this is why I'm kind of like, if you come to me asking for deliverance, are you truly ready? Right. Because I've prayed for deliverance over people, and yeah. three days later, they experience freedom during this gap, and yeah. then out of nowhere, they get attacked again. They're like, I think I have something still. Right. Or I'm so demonized. Yeah. I'm like, okay, right there. That's your problem. Yeah. You don't, you're not putting on the reality that you are free Mm -hmm. and you're not staying in that. It's the truth that will set you free. Right. You are, you are being, there's an Eve moment there. Yeah. There was a Jesus in the wilderness moment where the devil said, Hey, you were free, right? Yeah. Were you? Right. Are you sure? Are you sure? Mm -hmm. I'm here. Did God really set you free? Right. Yeah. So now there's a twisting. Right. And now you've given the devil leeway. Instead of saying, hey, it is written. Mm -hmm. I am free. Have a good day. Take it easy. God, I'm going to come and soak in your love. Yeah. No, but instead you gave him a foothold because that 30% of your day Mm -hmm. was, oh, I was free. Ah. And now the devil is knocking at your door and you're saying, come on in. Yeah. When he was on the outside knocking in and not from the inside creating havoc. Right. Right. He was gone. Yeah. And they put him on. Right. Right. Because yeah. of the lack of truth that they put inside of their heart. Mm-hmm. There, was still a, there was still something in their heart that said, I'm not free or I don't believe that I'm free. Yeah. So like, I know a lot of times in deliverance that we see that. Yeah. Where mind renewal isn't happening. Right. And they just want to get delivered of it because they want a microwave change. Right. You know, your microwave change comes yeah. when you put on truth. Yeah. When you put on the reality that is Jesus Christ and right. he will set you free. And, and continue to renew your mind daily. Yeah. You put on the perspective of grace, mm-hmm. put on the perspective of goodness, mm-hmm. of happiness, of joy, yeah. love, mm-hmm. the fruits of the Holy Spirit, the the focus on the heavens, not focus on the demonic. Yeah. When you put all of these things into action, the devil is so far away. Yeah. He is so far away. Actually, Caleb said this on hearing the voice of the Lord mm-hmm. um, or on hearing God's voice. Yeah. I think it was part two mm-hmm. where he was like, you know, 
God doesn't have to scream at you because he's so close. Right. But the devil has to yell because he's so far away. Yeah. Or somewhere along those lines. Yeah. That's so true. Mm-hmm. You know, because the devil, like, he's gone. He, yeah. he has to yell for you. God's quiet, whispering voice is there because that's intimate. It's quiet. It's he's, secret. He literally lives inside of you. Right. He doesn't need to yell at you. He's right. not miles away. He's right. right here. Yeah. So if we keep that perspective on the devil's far away and the and, and the Lord is right here, yeah. if you just tune in to that frequency, right. tune into that voice, yeah. that is what will be consuming you. Mm. And that, when that consumes you, you will walk in the spirit yep. and the devil will be so far away. You just think that only Jesus lives. Right. There's no darkness in him. So there's no darkness right. in me. So that is where yeah. the devil is truly unarmed and defeated. Yeah. When you can put on Jesus Christ and your, and your perspective mm. is on heavenly things, not on the demonic things. So in the same way that we're supposed to mirror Jesus, if God condemns Satan, that he would be unarmed and defeated, that he would be a serpent that would slither on his belly all the days of his life and eat dirt then that's the same way that we need to see him and treat him. Right. God said that in Genesis 3. Yeah. Genesis 3. That's the beginning. (laughs) That was before. That was thousands of years before Jesus came to set us free. Right. That was a declaration by God for then. Yeah. We saw that through Enoch. We saw that through Noah. Mm -hmm. We saw that through all the patriarchs, the fathers of old, who were able to overcome the works of the enemy based Mm -hmm. off relationship. Wow. Right. They overcame. Sure, they had their slip ups like everyone will. Right. But that doesn't mean that overall in their spiritual authority Mm -hmm. and the way that they lived and their heart, they weren't overtaken. Right. They fought and they won. They fought and they won and mm-hmm. their mind it was consumed yeah. on God. Right. You saw in, in, in the Psalms where David is like, first I'm going to praise my Lord. Yeah. I'm going to make my request and then I'm going to ask him to overcome. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, it's constantly like, you know what? Hey, I'm dealing with this. Yeah. Lord, I love you. Thank you so much for this. Or thank you. I hate, I hate that I'm going through this, but right. you're so good. Right. Overcome this with me. Yes. Or overcome this for me. Yeah. Overcome my oppressors. Yes. Right. But it was never a soul focus. It was always the Lord's heart. Yeah. It always went back to, okay, Lord, I know that you're good no matter what right. I'm going through. And now Jesus comes on board. Yeah. And then he truly sets us free. Right. So if God says that the devil was already defeated. Mm-hmm. Before Jesus had come to forgive us, of, forgive us of our sins. Yeah. So how much more now are we to walk in pure authority and say right. the devil? Like okay, you were on your belly before. Right. How much? Where are you now? Yeah. Now that Jesus has come, set you free, and the Holy Spirit's now dwelling in you. Right. Yeah. We are spiritual giants now. Yeah. Don't let the, don't let this false garbage, wanna be satanic authority, so called. Yeah have a have a foothold on what god says yeah i'm gonna just speak this right now i'm feeling the fire right now if the holy spirit speaks to you a truth you stand on the truth you don't be swayed you do not give the enemy a foothold Mm. to take away the person of truth Mm. that is in your heart Mm. and i'm saying this stern because the body of christ bends over and bows to the enemy continually Mm. based off of a couple accusations Mm. The reason why, like what Marshall said in the in the coffee talk, the, look at the way that the world is right now. And we want like, oh, well, that's, you know, just the way the church is. Well, maybe the way the church is right now is trash. Mm. Maybe we need to come into truth and to walk in the authority that God has given us as sons. Wow. We are in the end days, brothers and sisters. We are in the end days. We are here to set the red carpet for Jesus Christ, our king, to come back. Mm. We are setting the carpet, red carpet for him. Mm. And he wants a divided body. No, he doesn't. He wants Catholic, uh, Protestant, Pentecostal. No, he doesn't. Mm. He wants the body of Christ to come together. He wants unity. Mm. And he wants a body, a company of believers, a bride Mm. that doesn't let her ex-boyfriend come and steal the freaking party. (laughs) Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. How much consent are we going to give this little demonic little boy? Mm -hmm. I don't give that due respect. Yeah. I understand the position he held. Yeah. Past tense. Mm. You are you are demonic. I am a son of God. You can come and try to play with me all you want. No. But I know where I'm. I know where I'm seated. Yeah. And I know whose heart that I'm truly being soaked in. Amen. I may have. I mean, you may tempt me. You may win a day. Mm. But my salvation, my heart, mm-hmm. you will never win. Mm. I lived for me. I lived 23 years serving Satan. Yeah. I will not live another day allowing him to take over my life. Amen. So how much more for the body of Christ? I'm no one special. Yeah. You don't see my name plastered all over. I'm posting that we're putting this 
podcast out so this kind of revelation we can pump up my brothers and sisters because I'm tired of going to every single church and seeing sleeping. Mm. I'm tired of every going to a lot of these churches and saying, oh man, we're, we're, the, we're one of the churches in the area. Let's get revival going. It's 2022, man. <laughs> 2,000 years after Jesus Christ and we're still claiming, hopefully, uh, let's, let's pray for revival. Yeah. We should have New Jerusalem, where freaking Los Angeles is, <laughs> where there's homeless and dead and and, and, and drugs. Hmm. There should be angels walking the streets in hmm. glory. Body of Christ, wake up! Hmm. The enemy has no foothold over what God is living in. Amen. Let's live in truth. Let's live in the divine love that God has given us as hmm. sons. Hmm. You think he died on the cross so the enemy can come and continually make your life a living hell? No. No. I love Jesus and I love the body of Christ, but we need to do more. Hmm. And the enemy is unarmed and defeated. He is an unarmed, defeated dude in a freaking wheelchair in a boxing ring. And we're Mike Tyson, Muhammad Ali, Jesus Christ combination person <laughs> with the arsenal of heaven. Yeah. I'm bringing Thor's hammer into this piece and I'm going to slap this dude across the face and laugh at him as he's slithering on the ground running away and I'm going to pull him back and kick his butt again mm -hmm. because it makes me, it gives me joy to see his ass kicked. Yeah. It's not a bad word. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. It's a donkey. It's a donkey. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for real though, let's stand in authority and let's not give the devil any leeway in our lives because yeah. he doesn't. Yeah. Jesus didn't die on Calvary so he can have authority. Amen. We have all the authority in heaven and earth. Yeah. Amen. He's given it to us. We are so graciously given that. Yeah. He loves us so much and it's by the secret place. It's by our identity mm -hmm. and it's by standing in the truth that is Jesus Christ and that reality that we put on yeah. and that perspective mm -hmm. of even if it's 30% of our day that looks like crap, the 70% is a lot greater and we pass the test and we're doing very good. Yeah. Now it's time to get a little bit better each time. Yeah. Amen. And even if 100% of your day maybe was crap, then you know that God is still good. Right. And, and he's, he's still got there. your back. And it's just one day. It's just, if yeah. If you're in the Lord, you will never lose more than, never lose continually. Yeah. You will always win. You will, he's you may, already you given fall, us victory. But he's able, he's there to pick you up. Amen. Let's have our perspective on the heavenly things, not on the demonic things. Yeah. Amen. That's so good. Yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed Unarmed and Defeated. And I hope that you guys enjoyed Zach getting all fired up because it's always fun to watch him get all fiery preacher on us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I was feeling it. That's good though. So, um, Lord, right now I just pray for the viewer and for the listener. I pray Lord that they stand in the truth, the being of truth that you are Lord. I pray that that is so deep into their spirit, into their heart, that they recognize where they are seated, their true authority that you have given them mm -hmm. through the sacrifice that you made for us. And I pray, Lord, that we continue to keep our eyes focused in on you, on what you're doing and everything that you want in our lives, in our families, families' lives and in the body of Christ in general, Lord. So I just pray blessings upon you all. We love you guys. And I hope that you just have a beautiful rest of your day. Amen. God Jesus bless you guys. Name. Love you. Amen. Amen. Amen.